When is the best time to spray insecticide on apples to prevent worms? This is one of the most important topics in apple pest management. What are our objectives? After listening to this presentation, you should know how pheromone traps are used to determine when flight of codling moth begins, how to choose one date as the biofix based on traps, and how to use degree days to determine the best date after biofix to spray insecticides to control codling moth. Codling moth is the key caterpillar pest in apple fruits and has been for a hundred years. Here are some pictures as an introduction. Its classic damage is a hole in the side of the apple. If you cut into the apple, you'll see tunnels that are chewed by the worms with the worm itself often found in the core of the apple. Here's a picture of the worm itself. It's a larva of this moth and it is a caterpillar. We commonly call it a worm. Here is the adult moth on the right. It's very small. The length of a wing is only about a quarter of an inch. The scientific name, Cydia pomonella. It's an order Lepidoptera family tortricity. Here are some pictures of the typical injury caused by codling moth. In the middle group of pictures, it's a more obvious form of damage, such as a hole in the side of the apple, a plug of frass, typically at the calyx end of the apple. Frass is a sawdust-like type of insect feces that is pushed out behind the, the worm as it tunnels into the fruit. Another obvious form of damage is when the entrance hole is between two young apple fruit. And you can see a lot of frass pushed out around that. But then there are more subtle forms of the injury as shown in the two pictures on the right. There can be a small crack up near the stem or a small hole near the stem that might not have any obvious frass, but often when you cut into the apple at these type of injuries, there is codling moth tunnel underneath. Let's look at the life cycle of the codling moth. It begins with the adult moth, lays its eggs on a leaf. As soon as the eggs hatch into a tiny little larva, the larva immediately tries to enter the apple fruit. As it tunnels through the fruit, it grows bigger and bigger. Eventually, when it's full grown, it exits the fruit and it looks for a place to pupate. Usually that's under a bark scale where it forms a little chamber. Inside the chamber, it then transforms to the pupal stage. It's a pupa for about two to three weeks. That larval stage had been about three to four weeks. And then the new adult moth emerges from that pupa and the cycle starts again. So our objective in apple pest management is to prevent that larva from entering the fruit. So the stage we really wanna concentrate on is this part of the life cycle where we want to block those young larvae from entering the fruit. When we're using insecticide, then the big question is timing. What is the best timing for codling moth? There are two approaches. For the calendar approach, you can spray every two weeks from petal fall until harvest, which would be about 10 sprays, and that should do a fairly good job at controlling this pest. But you really are making more sprays than needed. So the integrated pest management approach is to use two or three sprays on each of two generations. That first spray should be at the time the first eggs are hatching, and the second spray 14 days later. But the critical bit of information is the first egg hatch. When is that? So that is what we are going to talk about here, of trying to figure out when the eggs are starting to hatch. So again, here is the adult moth, very small, only about a quarter of an inch. And its eggs are even smaller. And as you can see in this picture, they are nearly transparent. So even with a hand lens and a lot of time, you would have a very hard time finding these eggs. So we want to know when do codling moth eggs begin to hatch? Roughly, it's known that this is about two to three weeks after the codling moths begin to fly. But more precisely, it is 250 degree days, base 50, after moths begin sustained flight. But you might wonder, well, how do I figure that out? We need to know how to predict egg hatch in an orchard. For that, you need to trap moths and you need to track temperature. So to summarize what we're going to be learning about, in this presentation. You need to trap moths. That involves a pheromone trap that's checked daily until you get first catch. And then a biofix is the date of sustained flight. And you need to track temperature. You need to start on the day of biofix and track it daily until about 250 degree days, base 50, accumulates. So this is a summary of what we'll look at now in more detail. So the knowledge needed is in four parts. How to use traps, what is biofix, 
how to use degree days, and when is the best date to spray. So we'll look at each of these. Part one, how to use traps. There's several different trap types used for monitoring codling moth. There can be a sticky trap, such as a delta trap or a wing trap. There can be bucket traps. The most readily available type is the bucket trap shown here. That's three colors, white and yellow and green. In either of these, we use a pheromone lure to attract the male moths into the trap. I recommend three traps per orchard block, and these should be set up at bloom. More information about trapping in general is available in other modules. So checking traps for codling moth. Whether you have a sticky trap or a bucket trap, in either case, you need to open them up and see what's inside. So as shown here in the red circles, we are looking for our target moth that's caught down in the goo of the sticky trap or some dead moths in the bottom of the bucket trap. So these traps are set up at bloom. They should be checked once per week for most of the summer, but they should be checked every one to two days from bloom until the first sustained flight. So this very critical period in early summer. And then sustained flight is what we're looking for. That is when most traps catch one or more moths per night. What is biofix is part two. Biofix is the date that sustained flight begins. So we are going to ignore any extra early trap moths. There can occasionally just be one or two. You'll see some, in some examples coming up. When in doubt, it's better to be conservative and call biofix early rather than waiting too long and calling biofix late. So we'll look at four examples. So here's an example deciding biofix. This, these are numbers from the year 2015. So what is shown here is a chart where we have the date that we checked the trap, the number of days since the previous check, and then we have the number in trap one, trap two, trap three. So in this year, we set them up on the 29th of April. We checked a day later, and a day later, they were all zeros. On the 4th of May, we had waited three days since the last check. It probably had been a cold, rainy period then. They were still all zeros. Then on the 5th of May, we had our first catch in these first two traps, just a single moth. And that didn't seem like a convincing biofix. There were three more days with all zeros. And then on the 10th of May, it had been two days since we checked. There were six and zero and one. So I felt that looked like biofix. I called biofix as the 10th of May that year. Here is the same year, but just shown in a graph form where we show the number of moths per trap per day. So you can see this was that initial trapping when I wasn't convinced, waited a few days later, and then this was the, the day I called biofix. And then you can see after that, we, we checked less often. I usually check three times a week, but once a week is adequate. And you can see there are various ups and downs in the population. Here's another example. The year was 2011. We set up our traps that year on the 27th of April. And you can see we were checking every one or two days and we went through a long period with nothing but zeros. Then on the 11th of May, we had a one and a one in two traps, first catch on the 11th of May. And then the next day there were two and one and zero. So that year I called that biofix on the 12th of May. Another example, in 2013, we set up our traps on the 1st of May. Checked two days later, they were all zero. A day later, we had 001. And then you can see this was a year it was sort of hard to call. 001, we had 021, 001, 200. Finally, I called Biofix that year on the 9th of May. But in retrospect, I might have been not conservative enough. I probably could have called it on the 6th of May. So there's no absolute rule of what is the best biofix today. It's a more of a gut feeling of when you really are getting sustained flight. One final example, in 2018, there were just two traps set up on the 7th of May. We checked them two days later, two days later, two days later, had zeros, and then a three and a zero, and a five and a five. So first catch was on May 13th. I called biofix that next day on the 14th of May. So just in summary, over doing this for a number of years, what is a typical biofix date? Well, over the 18 years in Columbus, Ohio, the earliest we had a biofix was April 20th, which was in 2012. The latest was May 17th in 2020. Our average date of biofix in Columbus is May 8th. So of course it would be a bit later than that in Northern Ohio and a little bit earlier than that in Southern Ohio. 
Part three, how to use degree days. What are degree days? For one day, the definition of a degree day is simply the average temperature minus a threshold temperature. The threshold temperature can also be known as the base temperature. And then you can accumulate these degree days over consecutive days. Why use degree days? It's particularly useful for cold-blooded animals. Cold-blooded animals are those where the body temperature depends on whether it's cold or hot outside, in contrast to warm-blooded animals where their body temperature stays the same whether it's cold or hot outside. So insects, like frogs, are cold-blooded. So that means that insects develop fast when it's warm temperatures and slow when we have cooler temperatures. So degree days allows us to predict insect development events. So keeping in mind that insect development is fast when it's warm and slow when it's cool, but you need to realize there are limits to this. There is no development if it's either too cold or too hot. There's no development below a lower threshold temperature or above an upper threshold temperature. So that is illustrated in this graph that is showing the temperature over time in a typical 24-hour day. Starts out lower temperatures early in the morning, and then of course the temperature rises during the day, reaches some kind of maximum in midday, and then starts to fall as you approach nighttime again. So this is showing that there is some lower threshold. Below this, the insects do not develop. Once they pass that threshold, they are developing all through this main range of temperature. But if temperature exceeds the upper threshold, they stop developing until the temperature drops back into the more favorable zone. So this lower threshold is known for codling moth. It is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's also 50 for many other insects. It is a lower temperature, 43 degrees for some insects, like oriental fruit moth. And the upper threshold is known as being 88 degrees for codling moth. It is 90 degrees for some other insects. How do you find degree days? Degree days can be found in a lookup chart and from a simple calculation. I'll show examples of both of those. There are also apps now available for smartphones or various kinds of crop monitors that can tell you your degree days. So this is what a typical degree day lookup chart looks like. There are minimum temperatures across the top and maximum temperatures down the side. Minimum meaning the day's low temperature and maximum meaning the day's high temperature. So let's just look at one corner of that chart as an example. Let's say today's low is 52 and the high is 62. So for that min, we look across the top and we find 52. The high temperature was 62, so we look down here to find 62. Then we see where those two intersect and you see it's seven. So it means on that day, there were seven degree days. This degree day chart does already incorporate those limits that we just talked about for codling moth, the lower and upper thresholds of 50 and 88 degrees. So that means that any day when the low is lower than 50 degrees, it counts as 50 degrees. Any day with the high higher than 88 just counts as 88. So that's already been incorporated here in the numbers that are in blue or in red. Now, if you don't have access to a lookup chart, there you can do a very simple calculation. For one day, degree day is the average temperature minus that threshold temperature, and you accumulate degree days over consecutive days. So we'll see that in the example below where the base temperature, as for codling moth, is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So on day one, our daily high was 62, that day's low was 52, so you take the average of those two numbers is 57. Then to get the degree days, you have to subtract your base temperature of 50 from that 57. So we do that, we see that there were seven degree days. This is the first day that we're calculating it, so our cumulative is seven. On day two, the high was 66, the low was 50. We calculate the average of those two is 58. We subtract the base temperature of 50, so there were eight degree days that day. Then to get the cumulative, you take that day's eight, add it to the previous day's seven, and that's 15 for your cumulative. Third day, the high was 58, the low was 54, the average was 56. You subtract the 50 to get six degree days. Take that six, add it to the previous 15, so 21 degree days cumulative. Fourth day, a high of 70, low of 56, average is 63, subtract 50, and you get 13. Take the 13, add it to 21, you get 34. 
So 34 degree days have accumulated over these four days. Here's an example with codling moth. We had set a biofix that year of May 9th. And you see in this first column, there were the daily degree days, base 50. In the next column, there were the cumulative degree days, base 50. So we started with 21 degree, 21 degree days. The next day, there were seven. So 21 plus seven, you'd think is 28. It says 27 here because there were just some rounding errors. We had decimal points that we rounded off. But you can see the cumulative is always, always increasing as you're adding more degree days. So there are a few things you can notice here. That in blue, there's a very small number of degree days per day during cool weather. So even though we started on a very warm day on the 9th, from the 10th of May through the 14th of May that year, the temperatures must have been very cool because we were only getting a few degree days per day. But then anything circled in red, you can see there's a large number of degree days per day during hot weather. So we were racking up as many as 24 degree days in a single day during this period or this other period farther down. Then finally, part four, when is the best date to spray? How many degree days until spray time? This depends on which insecticide is to be used. Most insecticides are best by the time egg hatch begins, which is by 250 degree days after biofix. But some insecticides are best earlier. So 250 degree days after biofix is one target. The approximate timing of that is around anywhere between first and second cover spray, which is anywhere from 10 to 28 days after petal fall. The products that use this rule are Imidan, Avant, any of the pyrethroid insecticides, and any of the virus insecticides. A degree day target of 150 to 250, which approximately is late petal fall, is the timing for Alticor, Assail, Belay, Delegate, and Exeril. And finally, 100 to 200, which is equivalent to about mid petal fall for Confirm and Intrepid, and the earliest, it's 50 to 75 degree days after biofix, which is early petal fall if you're using Dimelin or Ryman. Dimelin is only available on pears, not apples. But Ryman is a product that is used quite often on apples. The idea of that early timing with Ryman is that instead of targeting the eggs hatching, you want to put it down on the leaf so the eggs are deposited on top of the Ryman residue. So back to our example. In this year, the biofix we had said was the 9th of May. If we were going to apply Ryman or Dimelin, then we were looking for 50 to 75 degree days cumulative. So we look down here and we see it would be any of these three days. So we could have applied it the 14th, the 15th, or the 16th of May, and that would have been good timing for Ryman or Dimelin. If we had been applying Confirmer Intrepid, we were looking for 100 to 200 degree days you can see that's anywhere between the 18th and the 22nd of May. And of course, the general rule, you have to consider factors like the weather and your labor availability. So usually if you're in your target period and the weather's good and your labor is good, it's better to go ahead and apply as soon as you can. If you wait too long, you're getting into the end of the ideal period, but then it rains or you don't have the labor available, then you're not going to get your ideal timing. If you were going to apply Alticor, Assail, Belay, Delegate, or Exeril, you could have applied those ideally anywhere between the 20th of May and the 25th of May. And finally, if you were going for the 250 degree days for Imidan, Avant, Pyrethroids, or Virus, it would have been by the 25th of May. So here's showing an example in a graph form. So this graph shows the mean number of moths, coddling moths, per trap per day. And you can see we had our first moth here right around petal fall. But we didn't call that biofix. Then here we had sustained flight and we called biofix. Then we started counting degree days. So we, in this case, we were using imidan. We were looking for 250 degree days. That ended up happening on the 4th of June. So this was a very uh, a later than usual year. So we called for delaying our second cover until the 4th of June. So that's what we do for first generation codling moth. But what about second generation codling moth? we do something called re-biofix. And that is when we see a new surge in the moth catch observed. So this happens usually around 1,200 or 1,500 degree days after that first biofix. In Columbus, this re-biofix is usually around the second week of July. So then we start a new degree day count on that re-biofix date. 
then our target for spraying is the same for the second generation as for first. It's the 50 to 75 for Ryman, on up to 250 for Imidan and Avant. Same as we just saw for first generation. So let's revisit our previous example. This is one in 2015 where we had ignored this first moth caught. We had had our biofix for the first generation here. And then you could see there were various ups and downs all through what we call first generation. But right near the end of June, a typical trend is the catch really falls off and it's very low numbers or even zeros for about two weeks. And then what we're looking for for second generation is an increase in the moth catch. So in this case, there was one little blip there and we ignored that, but then this next blip, we said that is our re-biofix. So second generation then occurred over the next month or so. Here is another example from a different year where again, we had had all these ups and downs of first generation, but first generation moths had fallen off. We're down to zero for just a short while. We had some detection here that we ignored. And then a short while later, we thought that was a surge. We called that rebiofix. And then we had the second generation that lasted for about two months. So that is it. We need to review the objectives. After listening to this presentation, now you should know how pheromone traps are used to determine when flight of codling moth begins, how to choose one date as the biofix based on traps, and how to use degree days to determine the best date after biofix to spray insecticide to control codling moth. So that's the end. There are some related topics and other modules that you might want to listen to. Those topics include using bloom time of landscape plants to predict insect events as an alternative to doing the degree day method, using traps for monitoring pests, a lot more detail about how to purchase traps and how to set them up, how to use biofix and degree days for oriental fruit moth control, and how to use biofix and degree days for control of San Jose scale.